so hello everyone so today uh, in this session uh, we will uh, discuss about uh, bode plot and in control system and what is its procedures and uh, what is its fundamentals uh, why bode plot is so important in control system how to draw bode plot so these are things we are going to study uh, in this lecture session so bode plot uh, in control system is very very important uh, when we are dealing with inferential domain analysis and uh, and we need to know what actually uh, uh, different kind of parameters to evaluate like gain margin phase margin uh, gain crossover frequency phase crossover frequency and after that how we can determine the stability of the system so that we are going to study in, uh, in this lecture uh, step by step and uh, after that uh, we'll discuss about its advantages so as far as bode plot is concerned so bode plot is only applicable for minimum phase transfer function so what does it mean by minimum phase transfer function it means that all the roots that means whether it is poles or zeros are lies in the left half of s plane if you can see my cursor your left half of s plane is here right so this is your real real axis and this is your imaginary axis so your left half of s plane is in the th this side so your poles and zeros has to be in the left half of s plane so for that kind of system which is also called minimum phase transfer function your uh, border plot can be determined now why uh, border plot uh, is important in this case is that we can uh, understand by this a uh, simple uh, uh, schematic here so if you can see here there is a system we have a input and we have a output let's say the input is a sine omega t what a is the magnitude omega is the angular frequency and omega is your phase let's say we are changing this angular frequency omega okay if you are changing the omega value then there must be some changes in the amplitude as well as phase right so let's say the amplitude is changed or you can say the gain has been changed so that becomes a dash and your phase is changed from omega t to phi so that is your change in phase so in this case if you can see here as we changing the angular frequency there is a change in the gain as well as also in the phase so gain plot when we draw in bode plot so that is the magnitude of gain with respect to your angular frequency and uh, phase that means angle with respect to your angular frequency so let's say g of s where when we put s is equal to j omega so g of j omega mod that is your uh, gain with respect to omega gives rise to your gain plot whereas your phase g of j omega with respect to your angular frequency gives you phase plot so this gain plot and phase plot both we can able to uh, illustrate in the uh, semi log graph paper because semi log graph paper is generally used for evaluating the bode plot so that we are going to see here now let's consider a generalized concept that uh, how to draw a border plot so we'll take a generalized transfer function and after that we'll go for a example so let's consider that we have a transfer function which is uh, in this uh, standard form uh, that is s plus a into s plus b divided by s plus p into s plus q where a and b are zeros and p and q are poles so what are zeros zeros are those for which your transfer function becomes zero and poles are those values for which the transfer function becomes infinity so what is the first step is that whatever the constant are there in the numerator and denominator that we have to bring it outside so what is the constant here in the numerator here and b and what is the constant here in the denominator p and q so if we can take it out outside so it will be a b by p q 1 plus s by a multiplied by 1 plus s by b 
divided by 1 plus s by p into 1 plus l by q. Now the constant which we take outside, now take it as uh, uh, k. So a b by p q here as a constant k. Next thing that to identify the slope of the first line of the border plot. Now in border plot, we generally used a terminology that we call this uh, oct uh, decade, right? So decade means nothing but a tenfold increase in frequency. Just like octave, as you know, that is means by twofold increase in frequency. Similarly, if there is a tenfold increase in frequency, that is for that we call decade. So decibel for decade means decibel generally when we have a logarithmic uh, uh, interpretation, there we use decibels. So in that cases, uh, because here we are using your magnitude plot. So in this cases, we are using decibels for decade. Okay. So generally it is used to measure roll off as a function of logarithmic frequency. So consequently, the units of roll off are either decibels for decade or decibels for octave. Decibels of decade means where decade is a tenfold increase in frequency, right? So per decade, what is your decibel? So that is the concept here. So decibel for decade we generally used in the body plot uh, for determining the slope of any line. Now back to our concept. So uh, we have to know that if there are uh, there is one pole uh, is there, the slope is minus 20 decibel per decade. If there are tw two poles are there, then minus 40 dB per decade. If one zero is there, the slope will be plus 20 dB per decade. If two zeros are there, it will be plus 40 dB per decade. So in this cases, if you can uh, see uh, the uh, gain of the uh, first line, okay, the gain of the first line is uh, uh, my uh, when omega is equal to one radian per second, that equal to twenty log k, okay, twenty log k. What is k? As we see, this is ab by pq, okay, ab by pq. After that, whatever the corner frequencies are there, corner frequencies are there like A, B, P, Q. These are all poles and zeros. So that is your corner frequency. That corner frequency we have to arrange in a ascending order. And uh, we have to make a uh, 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 table like this that where we can determine for what corner frequency uh, the slope is there and what is the resultant slope. One thing also we have to remember always while determining the slope, the slope for one pole is minus 20 dB per decade. But for let's say two pole, it will be minus 40 dB per decade. Let's say three pole, the slope should be minus 60 dB per decade. Likewise, one zero, the slope should be plus 20 dB per decade. Two zero, it will be 40 dB per decade. Three zero, slope should be plus 60 dB per decade. So let's say your Angle at the corner frequency are like a, a P B Q. So we have to uh, uh, denote that whether that corner frequency is a zero or pole. If it is zero, then your slope is plus 20 dB per decade. If it is a pole, then it is minus 20 dB per decade. Then after that, we have to find out the resultant slope. Just like that, for this one, it is 20 dB per decade when frequency is Q. So it will be resultant slope is 20 dB per decade. Let's say P is a pole, then in slope is definitely minus 20 dB per decade, then the resultant slope will be plus 20, minus 20, 0 dB per decade. Let's B is a zero, then slope is plus 20 dB per decade, so plus 20 plus zero, it will be 20 dB per decade. Let's Q is a pole, so your slope is minus 20 dB per decade. So what is your resultant slope? It will be zero dB per decade. Then after that, we have to write the phase equation and make a table. When, uh, where is the uh, phase angle? Uh, when we uh, uh, varying the angular frequency and to determine the phase. 
So phase, how we can determine this equation. So if you can uh, uh, find out the phase, it, it will be tan inverse omega by A uh, plus tan inverse omega by B minus tan inverse omega by P minus tan inverse omega by Q. Okay, so that we have to write it here. Then we have to change the angular frequency and we can find out the phase. After this steps over, let's say that this is your uh, Bode plot where this is your gain curve and this is your phase curve. The gain curve is plotted with respect to angular frequency and this is your reference line for zero decibel line. So this is called zero decibel line and for phase curve this is called minus 180 degree line. So zero decibel line is the reference line for gain curve and minus 180 degree line is the reference line for phase curve. If you can see here the gain curve touches somewhere at zero decibel line. Now the point where your gain curve touches this zero decibel line is called gain curve frequency. Now the point where the phase crossover frequency uh, crosses the minus 180 degree line that is called phase crossover frequency. After determining the gain crossover frequency and phase crossover frequency, what we have to do from gain crossover frequency, you have, we have to draw a, a vertical line downward so that it touches the phase curve. Okay. Similarly, from phase crossover frequency, we have to draw a vertical line upward so that it touches the gain curve. Now, the phase margin can be calculated from minor with respect to the minus 180 degree line. So if, uh, so this is your margin. So this is called phase margin and this is uh, your gain margin. So we need to check where is your curve and uh, accordingly with respect to zero decibel line, your gain margin is cal calculated and with respect to minus 180 degree line, your phase margin is calculated. We have to know that for gain margin, if you take zero decibel as line, above this, the gain margin is negative and uh, below this, your gain margin is positive. Similarly, if you take minus 180 degree line as a reference, so above this, your phase margin is positive and below this, your phase margin is negative. Next thing is that we can also determine the stability of the system by knowing what is your gain crossover frequency and phase crossover frequency. If your phase crossover frequency is greater than your gain crossover frequency, the system is stable. Your omega PC is your phase crossover frequency and omega GC is your gain crossover frequency. If, om if phase crossover frequency is less than your gain crossover frequency, the system is unstable. If gain crossover frequency is equal to phase crossover frequency, the system is marginally stable. So we can know that in body plot, we can determine the gain margin, phase margin, phase crossover frequency, gain crossover frequency. And based on this parameter, we can also determine the stability of the system. Now, whatever we have just now uh, uh, gone through all these uh, theories, let's take a practical example so that we can know how to draw body plot and from that how to determine the parameters and the stability of the system. So they say the advantages of body plot is to identify the stability of the system and to identify the phase margin, gain margin and with minimum calculation. Now let's consider a, a transfer function uh, which is uh, uh, written as uh, uh, 14,400 s plus 5 divided by s square s plus 20 uh, into s plus 100. So let's say this is your given transfer function and the, let's say the question asks find out the gain crossover frequency, phase crossover frequency, gain margin and phase margin. So how, what you have to do, you have to write in a standard form. The standard form is that as I said, we have to take the constant outside from the numerator and denominator. So it will come as 36 1 plus s by 5 divided by s square 1 plus s by 20 multiplied by 1 plus s by 100. Now, next is to find out what is the slope of the fast line. So that can be determined 
as you can see here that here uh, there is a square term is there so a square term means there are two poles so two poles means as i said the slope will be minus 40 degree per decade then what is the gain at uh, one radian per second so if you can see uh, this is your constant and this constant is nothing but k right so k is equal to 36 so um, again at omega is equal to one radian per second is 20 log k right now this k value if you can uh, put it what is k value 36 so 20 log 36 if you can calculate then it will come as 31.12 decibel then as i said for each pole the slope is minus 20 db per decade and for each zero the slope is plus 20 db per decade next thing is that we have to uh, find out all the corner frequency in an ascending order so if you can see here the, what are the corner frequency here here s is equal to 0 s is equal, uh, 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 corner frequency omega is equal to 0 omega is equal to 5 omega is equal to 20 omega is equal to 100 so that you have to arrange in ascending order and we have to make a table table is first column is your angular frequency second column that in that angular frequency whether in uh, that pole or zero exist third one third column is about the slope and fourth one is the resultant slope so if you can see here at omega is equal to zero there are two poles are there right so that is why it is written here two poles so the two poles are there the slope is minus 40 db per decade so what is your resultant slope minus 40 db per decade then omega is equal to 5. Now, next corner frequency, your 0 is located. Yes, omega is equal to 5, your 0 is there. So, slope is plus 20 dB per decade. So, what is your resultant slope? Minus 40, plus 20, minus 20 dB per decade. Then, your next corner frequency is 20. So, what is at omega is equal to 20? Pole. So, what is your slope then? Minus 20 db per decade. So, what is your resultant slope? Minus 40 db per decade. At omega is equal to 100, at the pole or 0 is there. So, at omega is equal to 100, if you can see, pole is there. So, what is your slope? Minus 20 db per decade. So, resultant slope is minus 40, minus 20, minus 60 db per decade. After making this uh, table, then we have to find out what is your phase. Now, if you can see here, 1 by s square. So, 1 by s square, your angle is minus 180 degree. Then, this is at uh, numerator. So, it will be tan inverse omega by 5. Now, this is in numerator. Uh, sorry, this is in denominator. So, it will be uh, minus tan inverse omega by 20. Similarly, minus tan inverse omega by 100. So, what is your resultant uh, phase? So, it will be minus 180 degree plus tan inverse omega by 5 minus tan inverse omega by 20 minus tan inverse omega by 100 then we have to take different values of omega and we have to find out what is the phase so generally uh, we need to take as many as points as more points we can take so your curve will be more clear and smooth so in that cases uh i have taken five points so omega is equal to one radian per second five radian per second 10 radian 50 radian per second 100 radian per second so that uh, angular frequency we have to put it here and we have to find out what is the phase okay just like if you can see omega is equal to one minus 172 degree omega is equal to minus 151 degree omega is equal to 10 minus 148 degree omega is equal to 50 phase is minus 190 degree omega is equal to 100 phase is minus 216 degree right after that we have to go for plotting of body plot now the body plot can be plotted on a semi graph paper your semi graph paper it generally looks like this okay so let's in this cases the x-axis that means you can say in this horizontal axis we have to take angular frequency and your y axis that means the vertical axis we have to take uh, gain as well as phase also so how to take this angular frequency let me tell you so this is 0 0.1 then 0 0.2 0 0.3 0 0.4 
zero point five, zero point six, zero point zero point nine, zero point uh, then one, then two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, then twenty, thirty, forty, fifty, sixty, seventy, eighty, ninety, hundred, then two hundred, three hundred, four hundred, five hundred, six hundred, seven hundred, eight hundred, nine hundred, one thousand. Okay. Now this is your reference line. As I said, for gain curve, we have to have a reference line that is zero decibel. Then with then up to this twenty dB, forty dB, sixty dB, and below this minus twenty dB, minus forty dB, minus sixty dB. Okay. Now if you can see here, at omega is equal to one, omega is equal to one radian per second. Then what is your gain? It is actually gain is equal to one radian per second is thirty one point one two decibel. So at omega is equal to one, let's see here. Here it is your thirty-one point one two decibel, right? Now the fast line has slope minus forty dB per decade, right? If you can see the fast angular uh, corner frequency omega is equal to zero, the slope is minus forty dB per decade. So how to draw minus forty dB per decade? So at this point, right, where Uh, the point where the we find our thirty one point one two decibel. So here we take one decade. We take one decade, then minus forty dB downward. Okay. Now remember the, here to here one decade, here to here one decade, here to here one decade, here to here one decade. Okay. So here we can see here you have to take one decade, then minus forty decibel. Downward. You see here to here it is 40 dB, right? So from this point, if you can see here, from this point, you have to take one decade and then minus 40 dB down. So if you can see here, we can we got a line here, right? We get a point here. So this point and this point you join, and then you get a line. So this line corresponds to one by s square, that is minus forty dB per decade. Now next is at omega is equal to five. What is your slope? Your slope is minus twenty dB per decade. So let's see. If you can see, omega is equal to five. So somewhere it touches the fast line. <coughs> then you take one. Then you take one decade. Then minus twenty dB down. So you get this point. So this point and this point, you draw a line here, right? Similarly, at omega is equal to 20, your resultant slope is minus 40 dB per decade. So omega is equal to 20. So where is your 20? This is your 20. Omega is equal to 20. So go down, and if you can see, it touches the point somewhere here, right? And omega is equal to 20. What is your uh, resultant slope? Minus 40 dB per decade. So omega is equal to 20. So you take one decade, then minus 40 dB. So you get this point. So this point and this point, you draw a line here. Similarly, at next corner frequency, omega is equal to 100. Your result is minus 60 dB per decade. So omega is equal to 100. So that means omega is equal to 100 here. This omega is 100. Bring uh, come come down, and if you can see it. Somewhere touches this line here, then you take one decade and then minus 60 dB, right? So you so this point and this point you draw the line. Okay. So this line is for one plus s by five, which has slope minus 20 dB per decade. This line has slope one by s one plus s by 20, which has uh, slope minus 40 dB per decade, and this line has slope uh, minus 60 dB per decade, which is one. Divided by one plus s by hundred. So actually, your gain curve is like this: here to here, then here to here, then here to here, and here to here. Okay. So this, but there are some extra lines are there, which is not as per the cause. So like this is your extra line. This is your extra line. Ah, uh, this is your extra line. So these are extra lines. But actual curve is your gain curve is like this here. To here, to here, to here, right? After drawing the gain curve, we can draw the phase curve also. Now let's take it as minus 180 degree line as as the reference line. 
So if we have it minus 150 degree, minus 120 degree, minus 210 degree like this. Now if you can see here at omega is equal to 1, the phase is minus 172 degree. Omega is equal to 5, your phase is minus 151 degree. Omega is equal to 10, the phase is minus 148 degree. Omega is equal to 50, phase is minus 190 degree. Omega is equal to 100, the phase is minus 216 degree. Now for this value, we have to plot it on the phase curve. So these are the points which we get for different values of omega. So after uh, after getting the points, then we draw a smooth curve. Now this smooth curve corresponds to your phase curve. Now as I said, the the gain curve touches on the decibel line that point it corresponds to a gain curve. So if you can see here, your gain curve touches zero decibel line somewhere here. And that point corresponds to, uh, if you can see here, it coming to be 7 radian per second. Similarly, your phase curve touches somewhere at minus 180 degree line. So this point corresponds to 38 radian per second. Okay, coming to be 38 radian per second. So that is your phase crossover frequency. So your gain crossover becomes 7 radian per second because your phase curve touches this 0 decibel line at this point. So that corresponds to 7 radian per second. Similarly, your phase curve touches this minus 180 degree line somewhere at this point and that corresponds to minus, uh, sorry, 38 radian per second at uh, omega is equal to 38 radian per second. So that is your phase crossover frequency. So as I said, uh, from phase crossover frequency and gain crossover frequency, we can determine the system stability. So if you can see here, your phase crossover frequency is greater than the gain crossover frequency. So in this case, is our system is stable. Also, as I said, we can, uh, we can determine the gain margin and phase margin. So how we can uh, do? So from first, if you can, if you want to determine the gain margin, so from this phase crossover frequency, you draw a vertical line upward. Uh, so, so that it touches the curve and also zero decibel line. So if you can see here uh, from zero decibel line to this uh, curve, so this is your margin and that is nothing but your gain margin. And this gain margin is positive, you see, because as I said, zero decibel line above is uh, neg uh, negative and zero decibel and below is positive. So your gain margin is positive here. So that's equal to 21 dB. Why? If you can see uh, here to here, it is 20 dB. So just just more than this, so it is 21 dB. Okay. Then after this, uh, from gain crossover frequency, uh, you uh, 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 you draw a vertical line so that it touches the minus 180 degree line and the a phase curve also. So if you can see uh, this uh, from minus 180 degree line from the reference line to this curve, it corresponds to 31 degree, right? Because here to here is 30 degree. So somewhere more than 30 degree. So it is coming to be 31 degree. So this is your phase margin. This is your gain margin and this is your phase margin. So this is all about uh, your border plot. So as we see here, there are many things we can determine here. Uh, phase margin, gain margin, phase crossover frequency, gain crossover frequency. And from this parameter, we can determine the stability of the system also. So this is all about border plot. Hope all of you like it. And uh, if any doubts, you can ask me in the chat box. Thank you, everyone.